Okay, and we are we're behind the scenes. Get ready for conscious conversations tonight. Get ready to I'm gonna click this on. We are recording there. Now we're gonna go. So we are behind the scenes and it looks like we're rolling on uh, live Facebook too. So we've got our uh, Ustream going. We've got Facebook Live going. We're getting ready for uh, conscious conversations on um, first one in June. First one in June. I'm excited to be here tonight. Um, feel blessed. It's been an incredible week. And uh, I want to thank the Lord, uh, our Heavenly Father, for uh, providing another wonderful day, another wonderful week to uh, experience His love and uh, presence. Say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would enlighten us, Lord, tonight with your living word and help us to, to strive to live in righteousness, faith, love, and peace with all those who call on you from a pure heart. We trust in you. We take that from your holy scripture, which is your living word. Bless the show tonight. Bless all the people who are tuning in. Give us your peace, love, and grace. In Christ's name, I humbly pray. Amen. Okay, so we're ready to roll. I gotta load up some, uh, load up a song, and we'll, and we'll go right after this. It is time. Okay. Okay, and we are recording, and so I, I've got everything in place. All I got to do is um, get us in after this song, and we will be. We'll be. Uh, so I'm gonna just jump us in after this song, and from there we'll go. We'll go from there. Okay. This is we gotta. I don't know how how long this song is. I thought I was gonna be able to uh, monitor that, but we'll start right after this song. Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. We're broadcasting worldwide from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado, on this incredible thing called the Internet. It's amazing, isn't it? And amazing in a great way. Anything that's that amazing, and thanks for the wave on my Facebook. I appreciate that. I'm waving back at you. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to have a fun time. Anything as amazing as the internet can also uh, have some uh, downside to it as well. But you know what? If we focus on the positive, and that's kind of like a, a way of living life, then we can always gain the positive out of it. Anyway, it's Sunday night, June 3rd, 2018. And I am your host, Stephen Ray Watts. I'm so incredibly delighted to be with you last hour Sunday night and all time zones around the world. Sit back and get ready for some uplifting, thought-provoking, 
and inspiring conversation. As always, plenty of music and hopefully some spiritual growth over the next two hours. Conscious Conversations right here on KUHSDenver.com. Well, we're going to pray. We like to, uh, I said a little bit of an opening prayer tonight, and that gets us covered by our Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit with Jesus Christ, who joins us in our endeavors to be enlightened by the living word, which is Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit with our Heavenly Father, one God Almighty forever and ever. Tonight, a spiritual smorgasbord, and I'm going to explain that in a bit, and the reason I'm going to do that, I'm going to start out with the serenity prayer. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change and the courage to change the things we can, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking this simple, taking as he did this simple world as it is and not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. We're going to be kind of breaking down that serenity prayer. I, I say that prayer daily, and sometimes it, uh, it I get stage fright <laughs> when, when I uh, when I say that prayer aloud. It's funny. I'm going to share a story with you. I'm going to get the opportunity to uh, share uh, at a uh, celebrate recovery uh, in Texas, and I had a chance to go out and visit with them, and not it wasn't a, it was a time where I just got to be a part of the uh, the um, the meeting and it was incredibly wonderful and I enjoyed it but at the end of the meeting we stood up and instead of saying the uh, the Lord's Prayer which we do in uh, in the support community support room that I attend uh, they said the long version of the serenity prayer now I was now I have said and have this serenity prayer uh, oh it's I've had it memorized for the longest time but when I was saying it with other people, and I somehow, some way, became self-conscious, and I, and I was having a hard time with it. And that's one of those times where I just needed to let go and let the Holy Spirit, which God promises, lives within me, and I believe with all my heart. Either just let the spirit of silence, listening to others say the prayer, even though I know I know it, and and then let it come out. I had that. I had that same experience one other time with uh, my third step prayer, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll share that a little bit later. I'm just, because it's important that we, we, we share those things. We share these little things, um, we call it telling on ourselves, and it's a good thing because we have to understand our uh, inadequacies and our, our weaknesses in order to be able to open ourselves up to the the spiritual blessings of our Heavenly Father. So, the serenity prayer, that's something that we're going to be talking about uh, throughout this night of, well, it's, it's a spiritual smorgasbord. And I say that because we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about uh, fear, uh, which is some something um, I'm an authority on, and I shouldn't be. Um, I should be letting fear be put away from my life um, for once and for all. And that's what I'm striving to do. And you know what? Lately, I'm doing a, a better job of that. And, and it's, been, it's been great. I love living without fear. But that's one of those things where those, one of these sayings that we have in the community support rooms really, really takes hold little simple saying that says, let go, let God. Yeah, it's incredible. Well, we'll be right back with more on Conscious Conversations. I'm looking forward to it.
and you are listening to Conscious Conversations right here on KUHS. I knew that was going to happen. Sit tight. Hopefully that's not going to be the full night. Um, but if it is, you know what? I'm going to be able to adjust to it. I know what to do. No sweat. Thank you, everybody, for joining me tonight. Uh, June 3rd, 2018. We're into summer. There ain't no doubt about it. And uh, it feels like summer around here. We are broadcasting live from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. And it's a good thing it's a mile high because it's been hot for being a mile high. One of the things that I remember growing up very fondly is, and uh, in, in, in my adulthood is in Colorado, in this beautiful state of Colorado of ours, it, it will get hot during the day. But it seems like it in growing up, you could always open your windows at night and you get that nice cool breeze um, coming off the mountains and uh, coming into your uh, your home and uh, making it beautiful to sleep and peaceful to sleep throughout the night with that cool breeze you could count on. And most times we still get that. It's 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 really great. I want to open up tonight with the um, with thanks um, to uh, my sponsors tonight. Uh, tonight, as always. My sponsors are Live at Jack's. Um, I'm very, very grateful to Live at Jack's, which is our live music venue down in the heart of downtown Denver uh, on the 16th Street Mall, uh, 516th Street, um, Unit 302 to be exact. Uh, that's Live at Jack's music, all kinds of live music. Did you catch the buzzword? The buzzword is live music, performed live with instruments. Um, each and every night, well, six nights a week is what we do. Uh, so we thank uh, Live at Jack's for sponsoring Conscious Conversations. Uh, very, very much. Very appreciate that very, very much. Also, uh, I, my other sponsors are my band, Dot Zero, uh, which is a band that uh, I've been um, a part of and uh, become been a, a, a member and leader of for uh, a number of years. And now, I'm so excited to say, uh, I can say, uh, Dotsero Praise Fellowship. Uh, got news this last week, it was this last week, a matter of fact, that uh, I am uh, with Dotsero Praise Fellowship. It is officially a uh, 501c3 nonprofit uh, business. I opened up the, uh, the bank account this week. We have all the papers filed. It is official, and we can accept donations that will be going uh, out to um, charities and, and worthy causes, um, causes like uh, uh, Voice of Life Radio that we are doing um, uh, fundraising and benefit for, um, many other worthy ca causes, childhood cancer, uh, Make-A-Wish, um, many, many uh, different uh, charities and churches and uh, ministries we will be um, making sure that they get that they get uh, contributions through you, uh, and the great thing about that is is that your uh, contributions are tax de deductible, and you will be see receiving letters um, with that from official letters from Dotsero Praise Fellowship. I'm not sure how it all works um, right now yet, but I know that uh, in my heart, been led to bring this organization to, well, to bring it about and to make sure that we can do God's work and to make sure that people feel comfortable that when they do give us their contributions, their hard-earned money that they set aside for doing good things and trying to help their fellow man, that they know that it will go to those people and they will receive the uh, the uh, confirmation of that and um, and that's a, a huge responsibility um, you have my word as a man you have my word as a Christian that I will always be following what my Heavenly Father says to do with this organization I'm very very bold and passionate about that just as is bold and passionate about that as I am saying that I need that to witness to my living and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the one and only Son of God. That is fact. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for all my sponsors, and we're going to kind of get into the show right now, kind of get into the, the idea of uh, those of you that um, are on live Facebook and checking it out on live Facebook, you saw, hopefully you saw the title of the show. The title of the show tonight is um, Spiritual uh, Smorgasbord. And uh, the word smorgasbord is fun to me. It's funny. I remember when we were young, uh, my brother and I, we used to go on family vacations with my mom and dad. and We traveled all over by car, uh, all over the United States, mainly in, in our region between Colorado up to Wyoming and Nebraska, of course, Iowa. Uh, we, we traveled mostly east and, uh, and north up through the Badlands. We spent a lot of time in the Badlands and uh, of the Dakotas and loved our time up there. Still love both North and South Dakota. Um, have some incredible childhood memories. But we would always go around and we would be looking for a hotel. The hotel had, had it, it had to have one thing for sure. Had to have a pool. Uh, I was wanting to see how many of you relate to that out there. Uh, I know my son, Pastor Jesse, can relate to that because that's uh, that was passed down uh, through genes. And then also, uh, now we always got a kick out of it if the hotel would say smorgasbord. And because we didn't know what smorgasbord was. And when we figured out what it was, and then we found out that it was kind of cool to go and enjoy the smorgasbord, a little bit of everything. Uh, it always seemed to uh, make us laugh and also make us happy. Good memories from my childhood. Uh, I thank my Heavenly Father for being blessed with an amazing childhood. Uh, amazing childhood with, with wonderful parents and, and, and uh, wonderful memories to look back on. Hallelujah. Well, we're talking about things like what, we, what I mean by um, uh, spiritual smorgasbord is talking about things like fear, talking about things like forgiveness, talking about things like trust, talking about things like hope, uh, talking about things like prayer and immediate prayer. Um, and, I, and, and, and that is something that we'll start with hopefully uh, here in a few minutes. And matter of fact, I'm going to start right now. I mean, it, it's, it's it's very important that we do that. We'll we'll have our opening scripture too. But I want to talk to you about something that that I've been implementing that has been that has helped me. Um, I, and I'm going to have a scripture to to back it up here um, from from Chronicles. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that too. It's about it's about prayer, immediate prayer. I found that that in my life this week and in the last few weeks and months and, and years, if when I do this one thing, everything always goes better. And and I tell you what that is. It is pause and pray immediately. No matter what happens whether it be something that you're uh, celebrating, maybe something that you are, um, an issue that suddenly comes up, uh, a problem that arises, something that agitates you, makes you angry, or, um, you know, if you immediately bring whatever it is in your life to your Heavenly Father in prayer, it automatically gets better. And you automatically have that support from the creator of the universe working in your behalf. Now, I believe that, that he is working in your behalf anyway if you call on him. But my own, if you will, character defect, my own um, inadequacy, if you will, um, is that I wait too long. Instead of, I, it seems like my first in, instinct is to try to fix it myself before I ask the Lord. 
So, first things first tonight. Ask the Lord immediately in prayer, no matter what it is. Unconscious Conversations, this is KUHSDenver.com. Okay, and we're clear from radio um, for for just a short time. Um, I got to get some more songs up and running. Delighted to be here tonight. Um, we were talking about things that, uh, well, you know, when things kind of pop up uh, all of a sudden out of nowhere. You know, if it's you no, know, I mean, you can we can bring it down to somebody. Uh, cutting you off in traffic or, or somebody, uh, you get news that, that wasn't exactly what you expected or wanted, or you have to react um, to somebody being rude or being um, unkind. Even if you only have a split second, it always is better, from my opinion, and I'm not, like I say, I'm not perfect at this. I'm trying to implement this, and it seems to and it's had a, 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 an amazing effect on my life. Immediately take it to the Lord in prayer. And that gives you the opportunity. It gives you the power of the creator of our universe immediately working on that problem or that issue with you. And it's always turned out better. Always. And, and I love that. And there's scripture to back that up too. Uh, and I can read a part of it. Um, well, see if I can find it here. Um, I'll find it. Yep, I can I can find that, and we'll get to that in just a minute. I just gotta make sure I get have my other my other songs up here. It's, it's important. Uh, we it, we find this all over Scripture that that the kings, and I think King David was one of the best at this. He would immediately go to the Lord in prayer. Um, he would repent. Of his sins, he would repent of his shortcomings, his his character defects, his uh, his uh, all his his inadequacies, and then and he would then and then he would immediately acknowledge the uh, sovereign uh, love and power of our Lord, and I think that is really one of the things that brought. Uh, him into such grace with with our with our heavenly Father. So let's see what what are we gonna listen to now? Um, we got this, and then we got okay, and then I'm gonna put up a couple of commercials. Okay, so I think I'm really set. And one of these things that we uh, will be talking about, we'll read a little bit of it. And give me a little bit of slack if I'm not, if I, on, on some of the... Uh, on some of the um, on some of the 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 names. So this is in Second uh, Chronicles twenty. 
and it has to do with uh, the war with surrounding nations. Um, it's had to do with King Jehoshaphat, and and when when we get to the punchline on this, I'm gonna probably skip ahead uh, because it it it'll, it should demonstrate, I hope, uh, what we're talking about. War with surrounding nations. After this, the armies of the Moabites, uh, Ammonites, and some of the men and men. Me, Meunites uh, declared war on jo Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at Hazenton Tamar. This was another name for En Gedi. So we're going to listen to that twice to get back on track. We're going to see how that works, okay? Um, Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. There is the first punchline. He immediately went to the Lord in prayer. He also observed everyone in Judah, uh, ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple for your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt, so they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not, we do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. As the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives and children, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, listen, to all, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through this, the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jurel. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still, and, O people of Judah, and Jerusalem. I'm sorry, stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord will be with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the
the God of Israel with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy spl splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and, and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of, army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground, as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. On the fourth day, they gathered in the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It is still called the Valley of Blessing today. Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps, lyres, and trumpets. They proceeded to the temple of the Lord. The kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought. The fear of God came peace for his every side. That's quite a length. Uh, but it's important. I want to things that I say, uh, the things that we're in topic from the living word of God. All scripture is God breathed, and that is scriptural itself. But this is what do we do when faced when faced with problems, issues, uh, fear, when faced with fear, when faced with any kind of challenge, the best course to take, incredible gift we've been giving is the ability to enter into a relationship and a con the entity, our God, who spoke into into being the entire universe, everything that is. With Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they spoke into being. We have this unbelievable um, gift of being able to and the universe. This is what Jehoshaphat did. This is what many of the kings uh, of Israel did. Forgot to do it and found out that there were consequences. And this is uh, this is some of the this is what I I forget. There are times where I will instead of I mean I'll immediately I guess I guess I'm uh, instinctively I I would like my first thought. I'm trying to keep myself for my first thought to be take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord. The Lord in prayer. What do y'all think of that? What do y'all think of that? Take it to the Lord in prayer. What else could we add to that? 
I add to that to give it more power. There's one word that I think add to that that would give it more depth, more meaning, more power, ability to bless us in any situation. That is, take it to the Lord in prayer immediately. Take it to the Lord in, in, in prayer immediately. What else? Immediately. Well, that's the, that's the key word for me. Key thing for me. But there's something that goes along with that that also uh, opens up, I believe, opens up the door of our Heavenly Father's blessings. And that is with praise. And very important, thanksgiving. We've talked about this. We've talked about this idea of uh, praise and thank many times because we, because uh, you know, I love the scripture. Matter of fact, it's one of my. Uh, well, it is one of my favorite scriptures. I, I try to live my life by it. Rejoice. And this is kind of goes along with our does rejoice always, pray without, and in for you in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is uh, first through eighteen, and all of this take it to the Lord in prayer, pray immediately with praise. And thanksgiving. No matter what it is, to, to, to do this, uh, we can immediately affect uh, in a positive way, in a prayerful way, in a um, spiritual way, uh, whatever issue we might be facing, um, be it ever so small or ever so great. And that's very many times based on our own perception of the immediacy of whatever it is. Sometimes we, we, I, sometimes I myself will put something off because I don't think it's in a priority. I tell you what, being in his presence and being presence and being in the present, for me, it's important to try not to put it off. And especially, especially important not to put off praying immediately for whatever the current issue is. It can be, it could be anything. So that's one of the things uh, that I wanted to, to talk about this evening. And it's been something that, uh, that has been on my mind. It's, and, it, and it's something that I have. Put into place. I have put into uh, into practice, and it has made a huge difference in, in my life. We go back to. I'm trying to think of. Uh, um, surrendering uh, to whenever we we pray and we we turn our our lives our as we say in in the uh, rooms of of uh, community support. You know, we put our, we turn our lives over to the care and will of God. By doing that, you know, we, we're, we, we do this in order to be able to do, give this to the Lord in trust. We're going to talk about trust. Um, we're going to talk about fear. One of the uh, things um, you heard in this scripture, um, this, this scripture, it said, and I wanted to just kind of uh, reaffirm it. Um, that one of the, the it, it says in here, uh, I'm going to find this. Okay, it says in here, one of the commentaries about this, this particular scripture that we read was, if God is on our side, even the greatest difficulties will not stand in, our, in the way of victory. This has to do with we talked about um, 
with uh, King Jehoshaphat. Just as God's messenger Jehaziel spoke to the people of Israel, urging them to trust in God's power to deliver them. God speaks, speaks to us in the Bible. He calls us to trust in Him. The most common in all of this, uh, the most common command in all scripture is do not be afraid. God often pronounces this command when it pronounces this command when the surrounding circumstances are terrible. God shows us repeating, repeatedly that no matter how terrible the circumstances, He is able to give us victory. All we need to do is to trust Him. Well, we're going to check this. Well, we got there. We're finishing up a commercial and we're going to be right back on. I got to get. Getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. Sorry about that. Uh, well, we, we have uh, about 20 seconds. Uh, sorry about the dead air because we've been talking about uh, going to the Lord immediately in prayer. And that's what King Jehoshaphat did uh, immediately. And it made all the difference. Here we go, we're getting ready to go live. Here we go. And you're listening to Conscious Conversations uh, on KUHSDenver.com. We are uh, looking forward to our own performance coming up at the Armory uh, later this summer. So uh, get your tickets to be at that special show, a tribute show, um, with uh, Prince uh, Cisco's Kids and Legends tri Tribute with Power to Power, Kira, and also El Chicano. Uh, sounds like a great night. So I hope everybody will check that out. Um, we're, we're talking about right here on Conscious Conversations tonight, and I want to thank everybody for joining me, uh, thanking uh, people for joining me in uh, on live Facebook tonight. It is our spiritual smorgasbord tonight, and we got started off with one little principle that has made a huge difference in my life. Uh, and I've been trying to put it into practice, and, I, and I'm not... I'm, well, I'm, let's say I'm not 100% at it, that's for sure, but I am striving to make it second nature. I'm trying to train myself to, in whatever situation it is, good, bad, a um, little of both, uh, challenging, um, confusing, um, maybe uh, perplexing, uh, whatever it is, to take it to the Lord in prayer immediately. We were talking uh, uh, during the uh, streaming section while the music was playing, we were talking about a, we put together a sentence with all this in, together. And, and I should mention where the scripture was that we, we read tonight. We read uh, a powerful scripture out of uh, Second Chronicles, set the book Second Chronicles, and it was the, the chapter 20. It was about King Jehoshaphat when he was being faced with uh, the armies of the uh, from Ammon uh, and uh, Moab and also uh, Mount Seir's armies, he was faced with this immense. Well, it looked like a hopeless pos uh, position. It looked like something that was overwhelming. But what King Jehoshaphat did was immediately he took it to the Lord in prayer. This is what made him one of the good kings. This is because he trusted in the Lord and he trusted that the Lord would deliver um, in many ways like King David 
one of the things that we talk about uh, on here often is, is it seems like, I mean, I love to read about King David because he's so incredibly human. Uh, he made such um, monumental mistakes in his life. And yet at the same time, through repentance and through uh, always returning to the Lord with a humble, repentant heart, the Lord always came back to him to heal him, teach him, and show him the way. It seems to me that that's something for us to learn too, that we aren't perfect. There's nobody that's going to live a completely righteous life. We, we do strive uh, to live, um, to pursue righteousness and faith, love, and peace. But many times we fall short. I fall short. And the lesson I learned from King David, uh, the lesson I learned from the living word of God, uh, which is Jesus, and is to always return, return back to the Lord and with a humble and repentant heart. And that is a way that we can know all, we can not only be healed, but we can also be educated and taught a better way so that the next time we, we can actually prevail over whatever it is that we are we're facing. So we talked about King Jehoshaphat and then we, we talked about what happened with him and I want to share something because it's going to hopefully segue into our next little segment on fear. Fear is something I am uh, I'm an authority on um, for whatever reason for a man that professes to have faith and to uh, to be as spiritually and and I'm not make no bones about it religious I should not have fear because I know these principles that I that I read about daily and profess and yet sometimes being human being I fall and let myself fall into fear so much anyway that the story is is that King Jehoshaphat went to the Lord and asked with the people of Israel for deliverance and the Lord more than delivered the Israelites, the Israel, the uh, Israeli nation. He did the fighting for them. They didn't have to do any of the fighting. But here's what it, the commentary says, and I love this commentary. It's in the uh, it's in the uh, the Life Recovery Bible. This is a Bible that I'm reading. This is my Bible to read this year, and man, I am. I just love this. It's been an adventure uh, that I just am uh, so blessed with. Commentary on this, and I wanted to share this. It's the second time because I'm sharing it with the radio audience. If God is on our side, even the greatest difficulties will not stand in the way of victory. Just as God's messenger Jehaziel spoke to the people of Israel, urging them to trust in God's power to deliver them. God speaks to us in the Bible. He calls upon us to trust Him. The most common command in all the scripture is, do not be afraid. Did you hear that? The most common command in all of scripture is, do not be afraid. And you know, I wish I could point that out in a ton of places so everybody would say, oh yeah, yeah, but you know what, it's true, it's true, it's all over this living word of God. God often pronounces this command when the surrounding circumstances are terrible. God shows us repeatedly that no matter how terrible the circumstances, He is able to give us victory. All we need to do is trust Him. Trust. Don't worry. You don't need to. Don't fear. There is no fear. It's going to get us to our next, uh, our next scripture. And it's funny. It's funny how uh, this is, is is coming together. These there's there's two words here um, that are working together. One is is fear, 
and one is trust. It, I guess one works with the other. If we trust, then we do not fear. There's a there's a uh, a verse, a scripture in in uh, the Psalms that I like to say daily as well. And if I had a nickel for every time I said this scripture, it would I'd be a rich man. Um, it is, but I trust in you, O Lord. I say, Thou art my God. My times are in Thy hands. And when I say that, I mean it. And by the way, that is uh, Psalm uh, 33, uh, no, Psalm 31, uh, verse 14 and 15. Uh, when I do that, and I trust in that, and I let go and let God, Think about that. You know, one of these things I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull up um, a cup a song here. Uh, I'm gonna pull up a song here real quick. Um, I'm not having that very. Not figuring it out too well here for a second here. Um, there it is. That's where I want. Um, we're going to listen to uh, Christine Marie and her song Gratitude coming up uh, in just two and a half minutes. But when I trust the Lord and I let go and let God, this is the saying that is, we have it on in, in the walls uh, of, of the community support rooms. And it sounds like a, a, a cute little saying. All the sayings that we have in, in, in recovery rooms, you know, some of them at, at the, I, when I first, you know, saw them, they used to anger me uh, one day at a time or take it easy or uh, let go, let God. You know, they seemed like little trite sayings that, you know, um, but the longer I've been in recovery, the longer that I've learned to trust in them, the long, the more I have grown to love them, and that's really important to me. Um, so this saying, "Let go and let God." Well, have you really let go, and are you really letting God? How do you do that? Well, we have to surrender, surrender, and trust. And when you do that, you show, we show try to show our faith by overcoming fear. We we let go of the fear and we we show faith by because there is no there is some people say at the the beginning of of faith is the end of fear. And I would I, I would have to agree with that. Um, there's other people that say uh, there's a great saying that's that I learned um, in a, a faith is book. It says that faith is 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 a growth, and men step out in faith with courage, with uh, with fear still unresolved inside. You know, sometimes that 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 happens to be the truth. Courage to have faith. Courage to stand firm, as it says in Scripture, on the word, on the holy word of God stand firm on with the assurance of God's word being true that's where fear will be overcome well we're going to listen to gratitude tonight uh, gratitude by uh, Christine Marie a wonderful contemporary Christian artist on KUHSDenver.com
Well, I am kind of just uh, not not being as good about uh, keeping the, the conversation flowing um, as normal tonight. But you know what? That's okay. Uh, I'm trying to get, I'm, I'm doing a better job of getting the, uh, the songs and, and the production done. I'm just forgetting that I've got an audience uh, uh, watching. So I'd like to thank my, uh, my audience from all over the world uh, for supporting Conscious Conversations and uh, but also for spreading the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's so important to shout out to the nations, to stand firm eye to eye and say, yes, Jesus Christ is the risen living Lord and Savior, the one and only Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've got one more commercial to get going here, and I'll get it. I get this taken care of. Okay. Well, I'm getting there. I've got to get my anti-drunk driving ones going here. Just not worth it, everybody. It's not. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, so we've got I've got I've got songs up going up, and then we're uh, we're going to share uh, we're going to share about fear. We're going to talk we're talking about about fear, and one of the the uh, we, we kind of already got talked about that subject a little bit, but I want to read I want to read scripture. We'll probably share this uh, with with our. Uh, radio audience as well. But this scripture is very, very important. So, we know that we live in Him and He in us because He has given us His Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God. God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment. Because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear. Perfect love drives out. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his neighbor, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love. I'm going to read the part about fear in that one more time. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect. So what is our key? Our key to fear is not only but the one word faith, love, and of these is love. And that uh, time and time again. That is uh, the famous uh, Corinthians chapter 13 uh, on love. It is, uh, it is the most amazing. It's 
what is that bug? Well, let's, let's check it out. We're doing, how can I forget that within our spiritual smorgasbord? And, I, and, I, and I'm and I very, very grateful for it. So let's go right there. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I possess to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight choices with the truth. Always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass. We know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, know fully, even as I am fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Be disputed. It cannot be disputed that the greatest of these is love. God is love. We can go back to scripture and it says back to back to God is love. And this is why we believers have to concentrate and work so that we can try as imperfect as we are and to show that love, the love of God that lives within us, and to show people that though we are not perfect, we do strive to show the love that God loves us. There's a there's a saying, there's something that's very important that kind of gets overlooked in in this. And when we when we go back and we look at this this scripture, um it's it, it's it's important to, to to say this. I'll find it again. Because it's part of that scripture we read in, in John and it gets overlooked. What, um, see if I can find this. There's a part in here. Watch me not be able to. Yeah, it's right there in front of my eyes. It's it gets overlooked. It's it's John 1 4 19. We love because he loved us first. And then this goes back to a, a command um, in in that that Jesus said, and I'm gonna 
I love the way this is segueing straight from one to the other, and it, it's 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 really cool. Uh, and I love it. It goes right here, so I can find it. A new, this is Jesus speaking. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Well, there is the golden rule, right? We, we, we talk about the golden rule. Um, and I got to watch my time here. Just Now I got commercials coming up, so I'm good. Uh, the golden rule, and it's and it's that rule that we've, we've been taught and follow. Um, and that is uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And we, a lot of, a lot of us go by that. Um, hold on, I'm, I'm getting... There we go. I'm trying to... Per <laughs> I'm not ambidextrous. Um, trying to do too many things at once. Love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I always like it because Jesus, our Lord and Savior, took that word. And we were talking about it. Love, as one of our spiritual smorgasbord, he took it to the ultimate. And he, based, and he said, a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, men all, by this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And I'm going to go back to that. I, I need to make sure to read that to our, uh, our radio audience, um, that, that scripture. And I and I beg your pardon that you'll get to hear it again, but that's not that's okay because that's uh, that that work that works. And we're continuing on on our spiritual smorgasbord tonight. Uh, we got one more commercial, and then we're going to be live. I got to get my time up here. It's funny. It's it's. And, and, and oh so interesting that all these, of all, the one word of all this spiritual smorgasbord that I wrote down here, fear, forgiveness, trust, hope, uh, prayer, and the one word that I left out, how could I leave out? The one word I left out was love. And yet, did, we, did you see how the living word of God just through the scripture, through the living word of God, through scripture, it pointed us right back to not only the antidote for fear, but the inspiration for everything, the one word, love. And you're listening to KUHSDenver.com. And uh, Conscious Conversations on, yes, it is Sunday night, and I love Sunday night. Sunday night is, uh, it, it praise Sunday night. It, with, it's a night to reflect and to give thanksgiving and to uh, even look ahead a little bit, you know, at the uh, coming week, knowing that uh, whatever the week holds, that we know it will be in our best interest through our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm so delighted to be with you tonight on Conscious Conversations. I was just uh, talking to our streaming audience and what an incredible journey we were just on. We're Our, our subject matter tonight is a spiritual uh, smorgasbord and that means a little bit of everything. And I had written down, we, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to Show, just give our radio audience just a little bit of 
what this journey, this little journey was like um, while the music was playing. I had written down uh, tonight uh, things to to talk about um, and in our spiritual smorgasbord and it was these fear, uh, forgiveness, uh, trust, hope, uh, prayer, and uh, faith, and we talked about that. And guess what? We started out with our first scripture. I'm going to share that with you because I had meant to do that anyway. And then I'm going to point the rest of the way um, through. And then we're going to get on. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show you where this little journey led us. This is, um, this is our scripture. And this was, I was just pointed at fear, okay? Um, fear and trust at the same time. So, dear friends, and this is 1 John 4, 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. And that's always great to repeat. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Now that, that spiritual, uh, that took us, um, that took us to well, we had to talk about love, right? And realizing that of all of those, of all that spiritual smorgasbord, I had left out love from fear, forgiveness, trust, hope, faith, prayer. All but the greatest of these is love. I encourage you to uh, check out uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter 13 and read the chapter, the famous chapter on love. It really does spell it all out. And yet then that pointed us to our journey in that took us back to the, the, the Gospel of John that also basic that also said, a new commandment I have for you to love one another, not as you love yourself. No, this was Jesus speaking. And Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. That's amazing. It's amazing. If we try to love each other as Jesus has loved us, that is something we can strive for from the minute we wake up to the minute we go to bed and even through the night watches as we meditate on his word, and as we think about how we can try to be more Christ-like. It's, uh, it's, it's been a great journey, uh, and, and I want to, um, we, we, one of the parts of, I wanted to share this, this, uh, I've got time to do this, I believe. Yes, I do. One of the uh, uh, things we were talking about was fear, and Another word for fear uh, many times is worry. And so I wanted to share this uh, devotional like I normally do 
on a uh, on a night here at Conscious Conversations. Uh, this is a devotional from Jesus Always. Um, I love these devotionals because this is uh, written by Sarah Young, uh, as if Jesus were speaking, all based on Scripture. And this is really a good one because it 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 talks about fear and worry, and I think it's going to to comfort give you comfort strive to live more fully in the present refusing to worry about tomorrow striving involves devoting serious effort and energy to something it usually includes struggle you must exert continual effort if you want to live present tense in my presence I urge you to make me the major pursuit of your everyday life. It's essential to resist the temptation to worry. You live in a fallen world, full of sin and struggles. You will never run short of things that can provoke, that can provoke anxiety. However, remember that each day is enough, has enough trouble of its own. I carefully calibrate the amount of difficulty you will encounter on a given day. I know exactly how much you can handle with my help. And I'm always near, ready to strengthen, encourage, and comfort you. Pursuing a close walk with me is the best way to live in the present. Keep bringing your thoughts back to me whenever they wander. Return to me joyfully, beloved. I will take great delight in you and rejoice over you with singing. And that is based on Matthew 6, verse 34, Isaiah 41, verse 10, and Zephaniah 3 verse 17 worry is something that I fall into when I'm not letting go and letting God when I'm not trusting that God has this that Jesus is not only taking care of me but has my complete best interest in mind because of surrendering and trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will it's an amazing it's an amazing way to live life it's hard to do 24 7 it's hard to do every single time many times it's just like it's just like everything else when you learn something and it's like me trying to learn the banjo um, it's like over and over. It's like making mistakes and then keep trying and then you keep trying. Any endeavor like that. It takes you continuing to try and to release that worry. But when we do and we, we continue to practice at it, it seems to get easier little by little. Little by little. Well, we, we're having this journey tonight in uh, having this journey in, in, in a spiritual smorgasbord and there's there's uh, something that needs to be there's something that needs to be uh, you know talked about in the midst of this and I'm trying to find this this particular uh, this particular devotional looks like I'm going to have to uh, save that until this next uh, segment we're going to be talking about um, we've got, uh, there's two more there's two more devotionals I want to share tonight um, both of them uh, come from our daily bread and I want to show our daily bread our daily bread is uh, is an incredible uh, devotional uh, that is free and uh, you can you can go to our daily bread.org and you know it's good make a, uh, a donation uh, and, and you can receive this 
This is a devotional that my mother um, used to read every day, and I I used to see it her reading it and read it with her just shortly before she went to heaven. And um, I don't I don't like to miss it. Got to get a song up here. What do you what do, what shall we listen to? Uh, I think what we'll do is listen to the sanctuary. It's a good time for it. And then we'll find another. We'll find another song. We are we are on uh, conscious conversations tonight. It's our spiritual smorgasbord night. We're going to start um, bringing uh, guests um, back into this uh, studio uh, to talk about um, a, a recovery from addiction and also, but talking about the uh, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ worldwide to every ear that is open to the good news. Okay, and we're clear from radio for just a minute, and then... I love the way we've, we've uh, kind of encapsulated everything in our spiritual smorgasbord tonight comes back to one word which is love god is love god is is all love and all light there is no darkness in our lord one of the things that about one other one last thing about uh fear that i wanted to share uh with and this comes out of um a book um it, it, it comes out of um, the book, our book on um, Alcoholics Anonymous. This is, see if I can find this. almost there this is one of the the chapters on uh, this is one of the most incredible uh, two two chap two uh, paragraphs within our 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 book uh, we call it the big book and uh, this is one that talks about us uh, reviewing and trying to find out about it and uh, being honest about our fears and it says perhaps there is a better way we think so for we are now on a different basis the basis of trusting and relying on God we trust infinite God rather than our finite selves we are in the world to play the role he assigns just to the extent that we do as we think he would have us and humbly rely on him does he enable us to match calamity with serenity we never apologize to anyone for depending upon our creator we can laugh at those who think spirituality the way of weakness paradoxically it is the way of strength the verdict of the ages is that faith means courage. All men of faith have courage. They trust their God. We never apologize for God. Instead, we let him demonstrate through us what he can do. We ask him to remove our fear and direct our attention to what he would have us be. At once, we commence to outgrow fear isn't that an incredible I, I love that uh, uh, you know I, I love that that those two paragraphs they jump off the they jump off the page right into my heart I might even um, I might even try uh, I was looking for them and they were I had a mark how about that <laughs> that's me um, but that is is such an important part of um, 
the whole ideas that we're talking about tonight um, and how trust in God, um, realizing that God is love and trusting that He will show us His way and we can trust in that. Gotta Hear Mercy by Amanda Cook. I love that song. It's it's it, I I may I may read that again um, for the uh, the radio tonight um, because that's something we were talking about. I I, I wanted to read that reread that scripture. It's okay. And on a side note, um, how about this? With eight and a half years, eight year, half years plus of sobriety. Actually, I'm uh, coming. I'm just two months sh shy of, of nine years of sobriety con consecutively. It's taken me that long to figure out that Perrier is slightly more car carbonated than San Pellegrino. San Pellegrino has a little bit more taste to it, so it's whichever you want. At least. This is just my opinion. This is, in fact, this is my opinion of a product that I like. Both of them. Perrier makes you burp. I know my son used, and I used to have uh, contests on the way home from school. Uh, but I digress. Uh, it is delicious. Both of them. I love them both. So, do we have time? I, yeah, we do. I've got to get one more song going, and then I'm going to share a uh, a, uh, a devotion with you. Um, this is from our daily bread, and this must be shared because this is about. I might even uh, if I don't have. To, uh, time I, I will um, put up another song. But this is such an important scripture to talk about Jesus. What he did for us. It's from Matthew 27, 32 through 50. As they were going out, they and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means there they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But after taking it, when they crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him. Placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his right. Passed by, hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You are going to destroy the temple and save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't. He's the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. In God, let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am. In the same way, the rebels were, who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. In the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice Eli, Eli, Lema Sakwathani, which means, My God. My God. When some of those standing heard this, he said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with bin with put it on a staff and ordered it to Jesus to drink. Offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if 
And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave And this is the commentary. A loud, sorrowful afternoon air. I imagined it drowning out the sound of mourning from friends and loved ones gathered at Jesus' feet. It must have opened of the dying criminals who flanked Jesus on both sides and surely startled all who heard it. Eli, Eli, Lamb. Jesus cried out in agony and in utter despondency as he hung on that cross of shame. I think of since eternity, Jesus has been in perfect fellowship with God the Father. Together, they had created the universe. Image and planned salvation. Never in the eons past had they not with each other. And now as the anguish of the cross continued to bring devastating pain on Jesus, the first time lost the awareness of God's presence as he carried the burden of the sins of the world. It was the only way. Interrupted fellowship. Could our salvation And it was only because Jesus was willing to experience this sense of being forsaken us that we humans can gain fellowship with God. Thank you, Jesus, for experiencing such pain. So forgiven. And that brings us right to possible on our journey, our Spiritual smor smorgasbord forgiveness. But oh, that leads to hope also. Leading to hope. Here's the prayer that goes along with that. Jesus, we again stand in awe of your sacrifice. We kneel in your presence and with gratitude acknowledge that you did for us what you did for us on the cross. Thank you for making it possible to have fellowship with our Father forever. And here's the last thought. The cross reveals God's heart for the lost. And do I know that? Amen. So we talk about and we get to forgiveness. Forgiveness. And how do we find forgiveness? We find forgiveness through exactly what we were just talking about. That is the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. The ultimate sacrifice. And I love the way they put that in this, in this particular commentary. Let me say it again. I cannot think of more heart-wrenching words since eternity, Jesus, since eternity Jesus has been in perfect fellowship with God the Father. Remember, it says this in Scripture. I am in Him, I am in the Father, and He is in me. Together they created the universe, had fashioned mankind in their image, and planned salvation. Never in the eons past had they not been in total fellowship with, with each other. And that's just the truth. So what can we say other than scripture? Let me get back to um, um, I, I was other than scripture uh, about forgiveness. Well, forgiveness is is something we know about because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Only through his re his crucifixion on the cross and resurrection from being dead.
do we know about forgiveness. And we have that forgiveness guaranteed to us through the work of Jesus Christ. The forgiveness, as he has forgiven us, we must forgive as well. One of the strange things about forgiveness is, is it seems like it's so hard for us to do. For me personally, how do I forgive? How do I... Uh, I'm not one to hold a grudge, or, or am I? I'm sure there's people that would argue that. Yeah, maybe I am. I need to stop it. I need to stop it. We're going to talk about forgiveness a little bit more here in a minute. i got to get a commercial up here. i got one, two, three. We're going to do this one, four. We got one more because I know I gotta I hear gotta hear this one. This is important. Uh, it's a, it's an important one. So I got two commercials uh, coming up that are going to. Uh, I hope I didn't play the second one. Um, if I did, if I played the second one twice, oh well, that's the way it goes. We are talking about all of these things. All of them put together can be uh, built together in one spiritual principle. And that is, we talk about it all the time, but we don't necessarily uh, uh, practice it. That the principle of love. The, the principle of forgiveness. And the idea of forgiveness uh, that leads to hope. The hope of eternal life. The hope, the, the knowledge and assurance of eternal life with Jesus in paradise so and then we're 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 uh, we're moving we're, we're moving forward with our journey and we, we keep it going remember we're gonna get back we're reviewing a little bit here talking about take it to the Lord in prayer immediately with praise and Thanksgiving that's always good advice. We talked about fear and about worry, about letting go and letting God. So turning our, our lives, our will and our lives over to um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and our Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God Almighty, forever and ever. We also have to talk about, uh, and we're probably going to, i got to get over here to uh, our... our uh, See what's going on with Voice of Life, too. So, and you're listening to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com and, uh, a little bit behind there, but you know what? We're going to be okay. Um, so delighted to be with you. My name is Stephen Ray Watts, and we are talking, we are having our spiritual smorgasbord tonight, talking about so many different uh, aspects of, of spirituality, of, of spiritual faith, and uh, trying to figure out um, what, what uh, with have all of that uh, together. Uh, we, right now, we're talking, we talked about, uh, we talked about fear, uh, we're talking about trust. We're talking about immediate prayer. Uh, we're talking about uh, hope, forgiveness, and faith as well. All of these brought together in, in in the principle, one strong principle, the only principle um, that is God, and that is love, and a command that Jesus gave to us. A new command I give to you, and that is you must love one another as I have loved you. And there is no greater love than what Jesus Christ did for us. That brings us to what we're talking about, forgiveness. There is no greater love than what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. By taking on all the sins of the world, Becoming the sin of the world. He opened 
the door for us to become children of God. Think about it. To become children of God and to be and to have a relationship with the creator of all that is. That's where this is so incredibly important. Important. Jesus has become the high priest, the the way for us to be reconciled with God Almighty. And that is why if you invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, into your whole being, just invite him in your heart and soul. He will show you the way with his Holy Spirit and show you how to live and try to pursue the things that will make you happy, content, full of life, to be able to rejoice, pray without ceasing, and in everything, give thanks. You ever think about those people that can, that can just give thanks in everything? Well, number one, one of the things that they have that they're able to do is forgive. Now, forgiveness is a topic that we could spend we could spend an entire night on and, and uh, do, we, we could spend, we could take tons of scripture, we could, we could go, uh, we could go so far um, and, and, and spend all kinds of aspects on it. Forgiveness, there's three ways to look at forgiveness. First of all, forgiveness, what is the ultimate forgiveness? The ultimate forgiveness is what we were just talking about. Jesus on the cross. For our sins. Jesus did not have to go there. It was, it was the choice of Jesus to take on the sin of the world. And he was faithful through the agony and pain. And by doing that for us, he has given us forgiveness from our sins. All we have to do, all we have to do is, is go to the Lord in, in, with humble repentance. Confess our sins. Confess our shortcomings. Confess our character defects. Confess where we fall short. And repent. And ask if we may go and try to sin no more. Try to live a life that is that will glorify what Jesus did for us on the cross. Next thing is forgiveness of ourselves. Once we go and we confess our sins to our Lord and to our Lord and Savior Jesus who did that for us, we need to forgive ourselves. Because through that grace that we're talking about, through that grace, we are forgiven. And if we cannot forgive ourselves, then are we holding something ourselves accountable for what the Lord, our Lord and God, does not hold us accountable for? I don't think we have that right. I know I don't have that right. And I know sometimes it's difficult because sometimes I do find myself uh, holding, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. I have not forgiven myself in some ways. And it is only through bringing that to the Lord in prayer, in sincere prayer and asking him to help me forgive myself so that I may in turn now get to the third part of this and that is to forgive others because it says in the scripture tonight we love him because he first loved us it really said it's 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 right there I mean, and I could I could search it out again, but 
but it's in it's in First John uh, four. Um, well, I guess I am searching it out again um, because he first loved us. It says right here in it's First John four um, nineteen. We love because he first loved us. Now, with that said, should we not also forgive not only ourselves? But our fellows, our fellow man, our brothers and sisters, fellow children of God, should we not, should we not forgive them? Now you say to yourselves, okay, well, how, you know, it's it's hard to do. I don't know how to how to do it. Go about doing it. Well, I would turn to um, back to a, a, our our book again. Um, I think it's. Uh, I I'm not gonna be able to find it in here, um, because it it it's. Oh, I wish I had um, uh, researched that before. It's in it's in our book of um, Alcoholics Anonymous, but it's basically based on a a uh, uh, a principle from a clergyman, uh, a clergyman who who said one person was asking that clergyman, "How do I forgive um, a person I have a resentment for?" And the clergyman said, "Well, it seems kind of counterintuitive. It seems kind of um, kind of ridiculous, <laughs> put it one way. But try this: everything that you hope for yourself, something that you want for yourself, good. Everything that you would like for yourself that's good and and um, and um, joyful and and um, something to look forward to." Pray for the person that you hold that resentment towards for them to get that. Pray for them to be successful. Pray for them to be to be happy and joyful and free of pain and free of, of any uh, any guilt or 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 anything like that. Pray it for them. Everything you want for yourself, in other words, everything you want for yourself, pray for them that they may have that and do this diligently for two weeks every day diligently for two weeks and but you have to do it and by the end of that two weeks see what is happened within your heart your soul and your mind you may find that by the end of that two weeks you actually really want those things for that person and that that resentment has been lifted. That grudge, if you will, has been lifted. And then you will find out the biggest secret to, to forgiveness, and it's really no secret at all, but the best gift of forgiveness is when you are able to fully forgive someone or something or some thing that has happened or a group of people or whoever it is when you are able to uh, fully forgive you will find that that has lifted a burden off of you yourself that will bring you Serenity, uh, sur sublime, calm, peace, and happiness. A freedom, a freedom from, a freedom from anxiety and pain that you've never felt before. The idea, it's 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 the same idea as finding someone to go serve and to, as Jesus said. Those who are the greatest, who want to be the greatest, must become the lowest. Those who must want to be the leaders must be the servants. So it's the same principle as you trying to learn the, the idea of, of with in service, do you find that fulfillment, that joy, that satisfaction, that contentment of the peace and love 
and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God. That's where you find it, is by forgiving. And by forgiving, you have fulfilled that commandment of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We, we have fulfilled it, and then some. We have fulfilled it because we are, we are practicing what the Lord has already done for us. We love because he loved us first. We forgive because he has done the work on the cross and given us forgiveness and let us be reconciled children to our Heavenly Father. Think about that. It's amazing. That forgiveness, that love, with that kind of forgiveness and love, there is no there is no fear there is no anxiety there is no dread there's only hope and there is also grace peace it brings us back to a scripture that and I've got to get ready to uh, here we go oh I know what I'm doing here um, I, it brings us back to a scripture that I will uh, quote here. Let's see. Let me get this ready. Because we're getting ready to uh, we're getting ready to sign off. Uh, it's the scripture of flee now from youthful lusts and pursue righteousness faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Spiritual smorgasbord, but it all comes down to one word. One word. That is love. God is love. Jesus Christ is the risen, living Son of God. That is indisputable. That is what I boldly Proclaim tonight on Conscious Conversations. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus with the Holy Spirit, one God Almighty, forever and ever. Amen. Well, it's been an incredible night. I always say that, though, don't I? It's been an incredible night. <laughs> uh, what can I say differently? Um, it's been an enlightening night. It's been um, an incredibly uh, enjoyable night. It's been uh, a night to praise the Lord uh, and thank Him for all of His blessings, all of His teachings, and Praise Him for His love and grace. Thank you so much for joining us on Conscious Conversations tonight. Next week I'm going to bring some... I'm planning on having a guest in studio. So it'll be the first time I've had a guest here in the new days. Here at uh, KUHSDenver.com One of the things I want to mention uh, is that uh, where Dot Sarah will be this coming week, and Dot Sarah will be um, at our our own venue downtown Denver live at Jack's. We'll be there on Friday Friday night and Saturday night, the eighth and ninth of uh, of June, and we're looking forward to performing uh, there for everybody. Come on down, stop down, and check it out uh, live at Jack's. The best in music, six nights a week, um, right down at, uh, you can go to jazzatjax.com.
www.musicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalmusicfestivalm